Welcome back to Joyfully at Home. Today we are going to be making a nice and simple one pan brownie. Um, they're very, very rich brownies. In these I use a vanilla bean paste. You can use regular vanilla extract in these as well. They're very few ingredients and very simple to make. So we're going to go ahead and get started and you can make them all right in one saucepan. So we're going to start with 10 tablespoons of butter. We'll turn our heat on low so we don't burn our butter and just start to get that melted. And then we can go ahead and add our sugars and our cocoa. And we'll wind up with a very rich, very fudgy brownie. And it can all be done in this one sauce pot. My sauce pot is one that I really like to use. They're nice, heavy aluminum uh, sauce pots. And I found, I used to have different cookware and I really have found that I like these. They're a Cuisinart and they're very heavy duty, very good um, for even heating. And they're just extremely durable and they're easy to care for. Um, I just really have found that I love these. I can put a link in the description if you'd like to see what kind they are. Um, and I will do that, make sure that there's a link there so you can check them out if it's something that you're in the need for or you just really want a good set of cookware. Um, they're available pretty widely um, about anywhere and they're not terribly expensive, which is what also makes them great. Now that we have our butter completely melted, we'll add a cup and a quarter of granulated sugar, three quarters of a cup of baking cocoa. You can use any kind of baking cocoa you like. I like to put about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt in. That salt will balance out the chocolate and give it a little bit of richness. Start to stir this all together. And as you see it start to come together, then I like to use vanilla bean paste. This is one that's readily available in any of your standard grocery stores. You can use vanilla extract as well. And I just kind of drizzle in about a teaspoon of that. You can use a teaspoon of regular extract as well. This has the vanilla bean seeds right in it those little flecks of vanilla right in it and it gives it a much more intense vanilla flavor so it deepens the flavor of your brownies by a lot so it's it's kind of a fun different thing to use if you want to try that it's it's a wonderful product to use go ahead and you'll see that your brownie batter has kind of a granulated look to it that's totally okay because that's what will give your brownies those crinkly tops when they're all done baking. Now that you have your vanilla, your sugar, your salt, your cocoa powder, and your butter all mixed together, like I say, you'll get this kind of a granulated texture. It's perfectly fine. You'll take it off the heat and you'll let it sit for maybe five minutes or so. Let it cool slightly. It's not super hot yet, but you'll want to let it cool slightly before we add our next ingredient, which is our cold eggs. We'll add two large eggs to this and beat after each egg to get a nice smooth batter. And so you want your eggs to be cold when you incorporate them and you want this to cool slightly. So we'll wait five minutes and then we'll put our eggs in. Now that your brownie batter, initial brownie batter, has had a chance to cool for about five minutes, we're going to add your cold eggs one at a time. You're going to have two large eggs, and you'll just beat those in one at a time. And this will make it so you have nice fudgy brownies. If you add more eggs, you're gonna get a cakey brownie. The less eggs, the better if you would like a fudgy brownie. Okay. 
now that we have our eggs all beaten in, you're going to see that your brownie batter has a glossy, still somewhat granular texture. And like I say, that will give you those nice crinkly tops that you'll see on brownies, but it's becoming much smoother. And now we finish it off with just a half a cup of flour. And this we will be in until we have a nice brownie batter. Now that you have your flour mostly incorporated, you will stir your batter, which is becoming nice and thick, as you can see, for about 40 to 50 strokes. And then you'll go ahead and pour your brownie batter into a prepared nine by nine pan. I usually like to either foil line mine and slightly grease them, or you can even go ahead and line them with parchment paper, whichever you have handy and you like to use. And you will put your brownies in a preheated 325 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. And we are ready to put into our pan. So as you can see, my pan is lined with foil and I just use a very light coating of cooking spray. You don't need a lot of grease on this, just, just a little bit. We'll take our brownie batter and put it right into our pan and smooth it out and it'll be all ready for the oven. Let's take your batter, smooth it out all the way to your edges. Make sure you're in your corners of your foil. Try to make sure you're as even as possible. And like that, you're ready for the oven. So as I say, you'll go into a 325 degree preheated oven for 20 to 25 minutes. When you know your brownies are done, you never want to overbake a brownie because they'll turn out dry. Your edges will look dry. Your center will still look slightly undone. And you can test with a toothpick. If you put your toothpick in the center and it's very wet, they're not done yet. If you put your toothpick in and there's like some wet crumbs on the toothpick, they're perfect. That's when you pull them. So we're going to go ahead and put these in the oven and make some brownies. So this is what your brownies will look like when they come out of your oven. And you'll see it's not really wet, but you'll see just a few little fudgy crumbs on the tip of your toothpick. You'll see your edges appear to be dry, but your middles are a little squishy yet. And that's just perfect because they will continue to cook a little bit as they cool. You don't ever want to go ahead and overdo your brownies because they will be dry. These will be nice and soft and fudgy. So we'll go ahead and we'll let these cool. The beauty of, again, putting them in with foil is as they're a little bit cooler, you'll be able to lift them right up out like this. And just one other tip when you're making brownies is you never want to cut a warm brownie or even a cool brownie with a regular knife. I've always found this little tip to be about the best one that I've learned over the years. You want to use a plastic knife. You would think that would seem not quite right, but a nice heavy duty plastic knife will give you clean brownie cuts every time.